Atos or you know, something like Fedora, you're probably going to have to install 32-bit libraries as dependencies if you've got a 64-bit uh, VM or 64-bit installation. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, you don't have to have root privileges per se, but um, it's best to have sudo to root uh, for your first time and then uh, to this and, and then learn from that to decide what the uh, you know, minimum privileges that you require uh, for an installation. Uh, it's quite hard to do a non-root installation the first time and get it all right. So if it's your first time, try and get a root one first. Understand the dependencies and permissions requirements and then uh, you can do a non-root installation. And the reason why we do a non-root installation is some environments, especially financial or very secure financial organizations won't allow you to have root access on any box. So you're usually given a, a particular user like WAS admin or WAS A or some, some name that's derivative of a, of a web sphere administrator and uh, you belong to a particular group like WAS group or some other name and, and that will give you permissions to pre-existing file systems created by the system administrators. Uh, when you extract the um, IBM installation manager, you install it by running the install C command. You can see here that I've passed an accept license, which automatically does that for you as it's um, installing. Make sure you check log files when you install it. At the end of the day, it's quite a simple installation. Windows is slightly different. Obviously, it'll use program files. Um, the log files are a bit harder to find in Windows because of the user profile, so you might have to hunt around for those. Another utility that we'll need as part of a silent installation is not only the IBM installation manager, but also the IBM packaging utility. I'm not sure if any of you have already tried, but if you download the WebSphere application server trial or the WebSphere application server ND trials, they come with an IBM installation manager, which has a hard coded URL to an online repository. And what this means is that as you're evaluating and doing your installation, if something goes wrong, you'll have to restart the whole process again. And these downloads can take quite a long time if you've got a slow connection, i.e. to download the repository after you've uh, run the process. So uh, what I prefer to do is to take the more traditional approach, which is what you do in the real world, and that's to use IBM uh, packaging utility to download the repository first. Uh, you poke uh, or point, as it were, the um, IBM packaging utility to uh, a URL. That URL can be a free demo URL where you can get the demo products, or it could be your Passport Advantage account where you actually have the official licensed software. Uh, here's a URL if you can't find where to find the uh, package uh, utility. Uh, it's a not really well known product, and so therefore it was a bit hard to find the first time I uh, found out about it. And it's very, very useful. Obviously, it's a zip file, zip it where you want. In this case, I've used Opt Software IBM PM15. That was its default name, its default location. Here's an example of me running the installation command in a Linux environment. Uh, we go through a couple of steps, accept the license as we do in most um, IBM installations, as we need to accept, read and accept the license. Uh, the installation manager um, is being used to install the package utility and we'll see a shared resources directory as part of that. Uh, it's very similar to the Oracle middleware home folder. Um, whether it's useful or not, I don't know. This space is quite cheap, but um, there are shared files that go in there from each installer so that essentially doesn't have to install the same shared objects twice. Uh, the default location here is up to IBM packaging utility. This is where it's going to install to. So previously we we're looking at the installer. This is where it's going to be installed to. Opt IBM packaging utility is the default location for Unix or Linux environment specifically. You get language, choose your language, review, any extra features. In this case, there's only one. Then we uh, click install and off we go. Uh, we get a summary. Check your logs. Good habit is to check logs. Make sure it's installed correctly. Now we start the IBM packaging utility and the reason we do this is we want to go and get a, a remote repository, download its contents and create a local repository which we can use for our installation recording and we can also then send this uh, or copy this repository to our production server for when we do the real installation. So we launch the 
IBM packaging utility and a workspace loads uh, it's all based on Eclipse like all these tools so you get a workspace and some buttons so click on copy packages you'll be asked to uh, configure the location of a repository you can get to the same options via the menu um, there's a file menu option you can get there as well uh, you get to obviously add a repository a repository URL looks similar similar to the one shown in the screen image here this is the uh, WAS in the trial for version 8 and there are other trials available if you want to know uh, more URLs what's available you can go to my blog blog.websphere-tools.com and in that site if you search for repositories you'll find a page or a blog article which lists all the known um, URLs for uh, demonstration software from IBM for WebSphere. Click next, you get to authenticate um, with IBM. It's a requirement. Maybe they're tracking people that use the demos. I'm not sure. Um, it serves no other purpose really because we're not downloading anything specifically. Maybe it's just a secure part of IBM.